and I started ripping out carpet only to find uh, holes in the floor. I knew there were soft spots. I didn't realize they were massive holes. That tub in there in that bathroom is like halfway falling to the floor. So I'm down in a closet and then from behind me you just hear we a pipe had come off almost sprayed our breaker panel it literally got to the point where we were kind of yelling at each other and i was like i'm taking the dog on a walk and whenever i get back <laughs> it just better be done like just get it done what's up guys i'm elijah and i'm tina and this is the brooks, brooks podcast. podcast so in today's episode i figured we would go over why we were living in a single white trailer and what events led up to that conclusion and how that process looked like. Yeah. I feel like whenever we tell people that like we live in a single wide trailer, I feel like there's like some misconceptions about it. Cause you know, especially like the kind of environments we grew up in, like living in a trailer was like trailer trash, you know, like we we're, I still call this trailer trash. We'll just get moving in. <laughs> yeah, that is true. You just call us trailer trash. I don't know. I think, I think it was just one of those things that made sense for us. And I honestly wouldn't trade it for anything in the world. I think we got we got a pretty good deal going for us right now. Yes, it ain't that bad. That bad. So the story begins basically once we got engaged. Because mm-hmm. I was like, okay, so we had two things working against us: low low amounts of money, mm-hmm. and I had a dog. I ain't getting rid of my dog because mm-hmm. Cortana is fluffy, and I love her, and she's cute. Because mm-hmm. this was 2020, end of 2021, going into 22. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because we got so, married beginning of 22. So, because, and rents were already on the rise. Like, they've been on the rise since 2020. Yes. At that point. So, and even then, no one wanted a dog in the house. Which, as a landlord, I kind of understand, but I also don't like it. <laughs> Yeah, like I get it, but also, like, we, we knew that we were good dog owners. We weren't going to let our dog tear something up. Or at least we would fix it. Yeah. Because is my dog perfect? No, she does break things, but I fix them. Mm-hmm. So we was looking at apartments. Everything was either 1300 a month mm-hmm. or, like, 1000 It was, like, nothing. And it didn't have dogs or one or the other. Irregardless, not very good. And I was like, well, what are the options we could buy a house? And I looked at the houses available and uh, that was not really an option. No. Because <laughs> even like everyone I know that's buying a house now, I'm not hearing anything under 120000 Yeah. And like even those that are like that, it's like less than a thousand square feet. Yeah, or right at a thousand square feet. Yeah, like it's it's ridiculous. So of course began the hunt, and I was because was talking to my parents, and they was like, "Well, what if you just bought a trailer?" I was like, "Eh, I ain't above it." So started looking, and because I think we went and got did we get the loan first? Yeah. Well, hmm. After we explored all the apartment, yeah, I think after we explored the options, and then we actually were looking at some trailers for rent first like we drove around to a couple lots but then we saw that there were some empty lots so then we were like okay well let's find one to buy and i think i think you found the trailer before we got the loan because we knew we were gonna have to fix it up which is why we got the loan i think we think we got the loan because we fully landed on a deal on this trailer Mm -hmm. that's probably what it was and then we figured out the rehab costs and all that. Mm-hmm. So, irregardless, it ended up being some neighbors that was down the street from my parents' house that owned this trailer. And, which, of course, this is a video podcast. I can put pictures in. Yeah. So, I'll put some pictures in of what it looked like beforehand. And it was not great. Oh, no. <laughs> but, it was it was rough. But I was excited because I got the trailer for $2,000. $2,000 for a whole building. Which is a steal. Granted, I had to replace the floor. I had to put a new roof on it and paint it and clean it. Mm-hmm. And we're still not done. There's no. still that tub 
in there and that bathroom is like halfway falling through the floor. Which it's not to the point like it's dangerous. We just can't get in the tub. Yeah. So the toilet and everything works. So we technically still have like a one and a half bath. Yeah. Which was my biggest thing because the house I grew up in only had one bathroom Mm -hmm. for four people. Oh, yeah. No, we need two bathrooms. I was like, my wife is lactose intolerant and likes to eat cheese. Yep. Still eat cheese and ice cream. It's it's a fun time. Not for me. (laughs) But either (laughs) regardless. So we we got this trailer. Got for $2,000. I think I got a loan for like $24. Four thousand, or somewhere around there. So we found the trailer, and then I actually found a lot for rent. And I think it at the time it was only two twenty five, which fun fact, uh, it's in two months it's going up to two eighty. Oh, it's going up again. Yeah, but it's only twenty five dollars this time. Mm. So, because they raised the rent a couple times, because new company and companies are greedy. We all know this. Irregardless, I wish I had somebody to just buy this outright, but I don't. So that's why we're renting. But because when we first got the trailer, I tried my hardest to get them to just sell me the daggum land with it. They would not do it. Yeah. But it's well because it would have been so convenient if we could have got that land too, because it's literally two seconds from your parents' house. Yeah, because we're looking to buy land that's up that way anyway, and it's right across the street from them. Yeah. Honestly, we're trying to be a family compound. Like, we're trying to have everybody right there next to each other. Like, if I if I had the money, I'd put, like, little cabin house for Grandma up there, and, mm-hmm. like, we'd all be within, like, four-wheeler distance. Yep. Or exercise walking distance. Yep. So, but we found, finally found rented lot. Found the trailer, and at the time when we first started this, because I think we started this in November, I think, when I first started like ripping out carpet and stuff. Yeah, because it was right after I was we pretty much doing engaged. all of this while you was in South Carolina. Yeah, which was it was hard for me because I I was still working. I wasn't in school at the time, but I was still working, and it was. But she was working full time. Yeah. Well, I was working. I was working over forty hours a week. I was getting overtime at that point. Yeah. Which and she was working for Starbucks at that point. And if you know Starbucks, they don't like overtime. So mm-hmm. that was we was taking well, it while we I could think, get it. Yeah. Well, we were we were very understaffed, and I think they had the hours to spare. And like I wasn't getting overtime like every single week, but there were some weeks whenever I'd I'd get a couple extra hours. Yeah, and plus the fact for her to drive up. Was like an hour and a half. Yeah. So, not exactly cheap. And luckily, gas was still down at that point. Yeah. But, still but not exactly easy. That's whenever I was driving the really messed up Ford. Yeah. We, we have a Nissan now, because the Ford blew up. The Ford did blow up. Like what? Like Two weeks before the yeah, wedding. Yeah, two weeks before the wedding. That was a great time. Yeah, transmission failed. Yeah. No, and I had to, I had to limp it all the way up here. And park it in your parents' yard, and then... Yeah, so I could scrap it. <laughs> yeah, and then your Nana drove us over to the car place to get this car that we have now. Yeah, because we got a little uh, 17 Nissan Sentra, because mm-hmm. especially because I can't drive. I was like, we need a car that's half reliable, and everyone had to talk me out of getting the Tahoe. Yeah, that Tahoe was nice, and it was straight piped. Oh, I really wanted that Tahoe. He cranked, but, he cranked it up, and that thing said "rum." <laughs> I don't think that I don't think the microphone did that justice, but it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> but because but I was also like, "We're," because my mom was like, "You're going to be driving a lot, and this is your only car." Yeah, you need you need miles per gallon. Yeah, well, not, especially not miles per gallon, especially with me driving because I'm such I'm a traveler. Like I just I drive everywhere. And, yes. like, even now, like, I commute 30 minutes to work every day. Which, that was not the plan. No, not it, the plan. It's fine. But, so, yeah, so we got all that situated. And I started ripping out carpet only to find uh, holes in the floor. Yep. Which, I knew there was holes. Well, I knew there were soft spots. I didn't realize they were massive holes. Yeah, like, all the way through the floor. Yeah. 
It so, was it was bad. Yeah, we had to put in new subflooring, which I did. I was here to help with that. I I put I put in a couple of pieces of subflooring over there in the kitchen. My handiwork right over there. Yep, I was pretty much outside. Which, for the record, we are not handy. No, <laughs> not even close. <laughs> like I figure stuff out, but we ain't handy. I actually relied on my stepdad for the most part. So, so my entire family helped in a, a lot with this project. Yeah, like that was multiple times we we was just all over here, and sometimes they was even over here while I was at work on a Saturday. Yeah, putting down stuff for because we had to because. I went and bought it, helped load all the subfloor into the house, and then they kind of helped install everything and fasten everything. So pretty much my brother and his friend did majority of the, like, screwing it into the floor while me and Basil was outside measuring, holding everything, and getting it all cut down. That was fun. Yeah, and I'll never forget installing this floor. We have, like, that, like, floor that you click in. Oh, you mean the uh, vinyl plank we got? Yeah, yeah, yeah. My kneecaps have never forgiven me. We had knee pads. I didn't. Didn't nobody tell me nothing about no knee pads until the damage was done. Yeah, I bought knee pads like as soon as we bought the floor. Yeah, and you want to know who had them on the whole time? Your brother and Gabe. Right. <laughs> they didn't let the girl have the knee pads. I only had two sets. <sighs> should have bought more. But it's fine. I should have had my own pair. That were sparkly. The sparkly knee pads. <laughs> hey, he could have just crawled around on gravel for a minute. Oh. I would fix it. Oh. So installing the subfloor, that was fun. Um, prior to installing the vinyl plank, <laughs> where we uh, turned the hot w- hot water heater on for the first time, oh. that was when we started running water to it. Mm-hmm. Because uh, luckily, my uncle owns a plumbing company, and... He hooked up our water for us and didn't charge us. Praise the Lord. So thank you. Um, but we um, hooked water up to it and I just started to let water through the hot water heater to run through all the pipes. Started cracking it and everything. And then I heard a like, cause I'm in, so the water heater's in a closet. So I'm down in a closet and just opening the valve and then from behind me, you just hear, Psh! and I look back, which I closed it off, of course. I look back, a pipe from the sh- shower, because I had the panels off at that point, because we had to run the pipes up to the shower head. We A pipe had come off and almost sprayed our breaker panel. Yeah, that was uh, real interesting. <laughs> so that was fun. And, like, that just goes to show you how far this thing traveled. Because it's not like the breaker panel was right next to it. It's, like, clear On opposite, the other side of the master opposite bedroom. Opposite corner of the room. Like, not even the <laughs> opposite wall. Opposite corner. I don't know how it traveled that way. It it was, like, five feet from the breaker panel. Mm-hmm. Not even that. It was, like, two feet. <laughs> yeah, but we have had really bad luck with uh, with water in our house. Because, like, that happened whenever we were whenever we were renovating. But after we had kind of gotten things settled a little bit... It was our first freeze in the trailer. I'll never forget this. It was the scariest night of my life. We had been running water because the pipes had frozen. And so they finally unfroze. But we were going to be gone. So we were running water. So that way the pipes wouldn't freeze over again. Well, the bathroom in there, the faucet wouldn't turn on. the Because those pipes were still frozen. So we thought that. We had turned it off when in reality it was wide open. Yeah. We got back home. The entire bathroom was flooded halfway into the office. It was so bad. It was running down the wall, down the outside where you could see it dripping from the floor whenever we pulled up. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, uh, Elijah, is the, is there supposed to be water running from our house? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that was a that was fun times. Yeah, because it was like it was wide open, and I'm pretty sure that pipe, like the where the like the drain is, was still frozen, so it just all overflowed out of the sink, and it was. Well, also that sink doesn't 
doesn't really drain all that fast anyway. Yeah. But yeah, that was a fun experience. Had all those problems. And trying to, I don't know if anyone's ever like basically self-contracted a bunch of different stuff. Because basically self-contracting is when instead of hiring a general contractor that would talk to the electrician and the mover and the plumber and everything else. We did all that ourselves because mm-hmm. I like got the money for a general contractor, which you don't have to, you could hire a general contractor just to be like, take care of this. I don't want to deal with it. We didn't have that option. Trying to get in contact with plumbers and electricians and inspectors and pulling the permits. It was a lot. Oh, On was... top of the fact, um, we technically moved the trailer without a permit to move the trailer yeah well we didn't know and it's like the guy who moved it for us like who who was a professional in his field like didn't that was just say, a miscommunication yeah didn't say anything about it that was a whole yeah luckily we didn't get in trouble for that <laughs> it was like yeah is it still there i was like oh yeah for sure yep it's definitely still there but in fact, yeah, it was we, we, not. we didn't we didn't move it yet. Absolutely not. We did not move it. it it's fine. <laughs> so we got we got the trailer moved and everything. Um, the electric wasn't that bad because mm-hmm. I because I actually found a pretty reasonable guy. And fun fact, we actually came out ahead better than we could have on the uh, HVAC because we installed mini splits, which is uh, what's up above my head over here. So we installed mini splits, three zones, because I actually was looking on YouTube for alternatives, because getting, because this didn't come with the heat pump and stuff for the HVAC. Mm-hmm. I think to get a new one, have it installed, and actually have the duct work checked and poss- probably replaced, because the trailer had been sitting for years at that point, I believe all that probably would have been closer to $8,000. So... We got these. I think I paid four thousand dollars for for all these. Well, I think that was including the installation, was it not? No, I think it was four thousand dollars just for all this. Four thousand just for this, and then yeah, because it was the shipping, but it was like one big unit, two smaller units, and then the pump that goes outside, and all the hoses and everything to connect it. Because mm-hmm. it, it's a Mister Cool Mini Split system it's a DIY system. And then I paid, because luckily we have a family friend, because this is why you be nice to everybody. We pulled every favor we had oh, yes, we doing did. this trailer. Every favor I ever had. And by we, I mean Elijah, because I, I mean, I moved away from my hometown, moved away from all of my friends and everything. And so this, this is like his stomping grounds. It was very much all of his connections that he had ever made. And it's just a testament and- to never, never burn your bridges. No. Never burn but, your bridges. But that's also, like, I mean, it was, like, my parents' connections and grandparents' connections. Like, it took everything. But it, but we, we got it. But, which, to be fair, this isn't your friend's domain of construction. Oh, no. My friends are the people that you call uh, if you, if you want to see some dumb and silly, like, little uh, something. I don't know. They, they were just... My friends were very much the like let's throw a party and like be stupid kind of people and and it wouldn't even be the good party not the bonfire party no it would no but i will say that we were really good party throwers anytime anyone had a birthday christmas halloween all of that we always had the best time was there a bonfire no, we never had a bonfire. We I consider were, that a bad party. But see, no, but see, we were in we were in college. We were in dorms and in apartments and stuff. You can go, you can go find a field with field and put a fire in it. <sighs> Not in the middle of Cleveland, Tennessee. You can figure it out. Mm-hmm. Anyway, which to be fair, most y'all most of your friends were sub, from the subdivision. Yeah, that is As true. As uh, Phil Robertson would say, "Oh, the subdivision done claimed another one." Mm-hmm. All them yuppies. All them yuppies. So, yeah, we're in the country. We're in the South. Like, for us, it is a 15-minute drive to the Walmart. Yep. We don't have Targets. No, we we, don't. If we, for us to go to Costco and Sam's Club, it's a 45-minute to an hour drive. Yep. So, we are... 
Oh, we, like, Not in the we middle live, of nowhere. We live in the kind of town that if you want to go do anything fun, you have to drive at least 45 minutes to go do something. Like, like people who are like, oh, we're going to have a night out on the town, they mean that they're going to like Spartanburg or they're going to Greenville or like they're going up to Asheville. Like, not out on the town ain't happening here. <laughs> nope. I like it here because there's less people. Yeah, there's less people. But it's like also, it's all just like Taco Bell and Chick-fil-A. Yeah, but we're homebodies, so it's fine. Mm -hmm. Plus, I know how to cook. That is also true. Which, I tell you what, this woman, I'm pretty sure you just about married me for my cooking skills. Just a little bit. I mean, maybe. I can tell you what, I didn't marry you for your complimenting my cooking skills. You're no. so mean to me whenever I cook. Jeez. <laughs> First time I... She cooked for me was when I was sick. Mm -hmm. I he was sick. I was trying to be nice. I made him some chicken and dumplings. Okay. I was like, here is some. I thought it was chicken noodle soup. No, that was the second time. The first time oh. was the chicken and dumplings. Remember? Because we made the dough. Oh, okay. And you almost cut your hand again. That sounds about right. Yeah. You already lost one finger. We don't need to. Look, my, my finger's crooked because I cut a slice of it off. Yeah, at, I know. It was... a, I was in the meat department and. I was not wearing my chain glove. Yeah, because you're dumb. Shh. <laughs> I'm just kidding. You're not dumb. You just made a very dumb decision. When do I make smart decisions? That's also a good question. That's a good question. So, but anyway. <laughs> but the first time, see, and I, I think this just goes to show what kind of relationship we have, and that is the kind of relationship where uh, – Something is wrong if we're not bullying each other a little bit. Like we, it's fun. We're gonna be mean to each other. I say it makes it fun. Yep. Because first time I ever cooked for him, I made chicken and dumplings, and he took a bite of it, and he got up, went to get salt, and just poured salt in it. And he said, he said this is pretty good. It just doesn't have any seasoning. No seasoning. And I was like, what do you mean? I thought it tasted great. And he said, no, <laughs> you think it tastes good because you wipe. Okay. <laughs> to be fair, how many spices were in your family's spice cabinet? Oh, we had salt and pepper and maybe some Lowry seasoning salt, maybe. I think there was lemon pepper seasoning in there somewhere. Yeah, but... maybe lemon pepper seasoning. It has gotten a little better now. They do have they do have garlic powder and onion powder now. I saw that when we were there for Thanksgiving. True. So there, I think I'm rubbing off on them. Yeah. Because I'm pretty sure, because I think I... What was the first thing I cooked for you? Was it steak? Mm-hmm. Yeah, the first thing you ever cooked for me was steak. Yeah. And, and I do mine like the cast iron pan with the butter it was, and all that Oh, stuff. my gosh, it was delicious. I thought I died and went to heaven. I remember so, I, I remember after I ate that steak, I'm pretty sure I fell asleep on the couch after that because I, I was gone. I was like, wow, this is it. You did. I think we had taters or something with it, too. Mm-hmm. It was delicious. Also, my southern accent slipped. <laughs> we had some taters. <laughs> some taters. <laughs> <laughs> but the first thing you ever cooked for my family was chicken Alfredo. And I remember my mom, I like, I thought she was going to have a heart attack. She yep. thought it was so good. But I actually grilled the chicken yeah, stuff, too. Yeah, like, grilled the chicken outside. I, I don't do stuff halfway, really. But see, now, but see, that's the thing, though, is that if Elijah cooks something for them, they're like, oh, it's good, it's good. But if I cook something for them now, like... And I could cook it the exact same way Elijah does, but they're like, oh, it's spicy. <laughs> I think it's just because they don't expect the seasonings from me, you know? Probably. My mom, so. I'll never forget. I put garlic powder in. We had, we, she was making chicken and rice. My mom's version of chicken and rice is literally like minute rice with a can of cream of chicken soup. Yep. And that's it. And I made some chicken and rice that was like, you know, real rice. And we, you know, we had, we had the condensed soup, we had cream of chicken, and I think I put some cream of celery in there, but we had, we had some garlic powder and onion powder and, and some paprika and we, you know, we put some stuff in there uh -huh. and like hats and like, you know, I seared the chicken real nice and shredded it up and mixed it all in there. It was some really good chicken and rice. Takes one bite of it and she's like, oh, it's spicy. I was like, I didn't put nothing <laughs> spicy in there. What are you talking about? Maybe the paprika a little bit, but paprika ain't really that spicy, though. That ain't that bad. I just think your family's just like, we do really like spice. We like the blend stuff. <laughs> it's because they're white. That's fine. Which, we don't do blend around here. Mm -mm. 
Which, to be fair, I still critique your cooking. Yeah. You, that's what I'm saying. I didn't marry you for you being nice to me. That's for sure. But it's okay. I, I cook for her, and then it's all better. Hey, I, I try to balance it sometimes. Mm-hmm. Depends on the day. Now, see, the true definition of a Sour Patch Kid. <laughs> Sour, sweet, gone. Except for the uh, gone l- part. Luckily, I'm not gone. Yeah, I was like, except for the gone part. You're kind of stuck with me. Even if you tried to run away, I don't think it would work. Uh, I, I can't drive, so I can't go very far. That's also true. <laughs> so, you, you got lucky. He's my hostage. Look, there's a reason I have an office that has a door. <laughs> so if we need separation, we can. Yeah, that is true. But tell you one thing, though. The thing that aggravated us the most when we was fixing all this was when we installed a floating shelf. That daggum shelf. <laughs> it was terrible. Because <laughs> I don't even remember why we were fighting over it now. She, but I think it I was just... like you thought it wasn't level, but... I, can't I know it was something 100%. about like it wasn't it wasn't in the center or it wasn't I'll, level. I, I was or, trying to hit a stud, and I was like, "Babe, I need it here to hit a stud." And you was like, "No, but I need it over." I was like, "There's no stud here." Oh yeah, that's right. Because I wanted it like I wanted the I wanted the screws like to be shifted over, and you were like, "But it has to be here to hit the stud." And I was like, "But it's not going to be in the center." And you were like, well, there's nothing else I can do. We have to put it in a stud. If we put it in the drywall, it's just going to fall out. And I'm like, but I need it over here. And so it literally got to the point where we were kind of yelling at each other. And I was like, "Mm -mm, I can't do this. I'm over it. So I said, I'm taking the dog on a walk. And whenever I get back, (laughs) like, it just better be done. Like, just get it done. And I came back and it was done. And we didn't talk about it since then. And so now, from now on, uh, whenever we pick up power tools, one of us walks out of the room. Yep. Yep. (laughs) That's just how we have to do it. Yeah. So we are no No, chip on Joanna Gaines. No, because even whenever, like, um, well, because this will be coming out after Christmas, so your mom will have her present by then. But we were making a present for his mom, and we decided to make a little noodle board, which is like one of those things that has handles, and you stick it on top of your stove or whatever. I'll put a picture of what her noodle board turned out to be yeah and so we were making a little noodle board and so we went and we got the project board and we got some two by fours to like make the little strips up and down and we got the handles and then he was trying to tell me how he was going to put the handles on the board but it it just wasn't making any sense to me i was like why would you do that like why would you do it like that like can you not just like screw it down he's like he's like no you have to like screw up and like it screws into the handle and i'm like no like it just because the way that I thought that it should be done in my head wasn't how it works in real life, I guess. And so he was no, physics doesn't. Work yeah, like no. And so then he had to like physically show me. He was like, "Okay, Tina, look at this. You see this screw right here? This is where it has to go. It has to go right here. Therefore, it has to come up through the wood. We can't we can't make it go the other way. It has to go up." I said, "Oh, okay, that makes sense now." And he said, see, I know what I'm talking about. And I said, okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry that I ever doubted you. And then proceeded to doubt him at least four more times while we were inside Lowe's. But Yeah, but hey, it, it turned out. <laughs> You'll learn to trust me one day. Yeah. I think it'll I think, be like forty years and we're on our <laughs> deathbed. <laughs> yeah, no, I think but I think the part of it is it's like like I have the artistic vision for stuff, but I'm not really sure what the best way to execute it is. But then, like, I'll tell you what I'm thinking, and you're like, okay, like, I can do that. But you always go about it in a way that makes no sense to me, but it somehow still ends up being, like, what I wanted. But then I'm, like, in the process of it, I'm, like, over here, like, mad. Like, why is that's not what I wanted? Why is he doing it like that? But it's exactly what I wanted, and I'm just delusional. <laughs> yeah, but it it's fine, That's which is why... To an extent, once we pick up the power tool, I'm just like, okay, leave the area, yep. come back, I'll let you know what's done. Yep. <laughs> and you well, can do your part. Yeah, well, because that's like whenever you were putting the wood together for her noodle board. Like, I think the only time I was out there was I was just helping you make sure that the handles were centered, and then you did the rest. You put it all Which together. I ended up making a thing out of paper. So yeah. It worked out. It was fine. When in doubt, grab a scrap piece of paper and make templates. Yeah. But I tell you what, I think another one of our stressors is going to be that daggum wood burner, though. <sighs> yeah, you'll you'll burn the house down. Yeah. But it's fine. Because I had the wood burner out. I was burning on the noodle board. And I had set it down. 
and I was cold, so he was trying to be nice and be like, be like, oh, here, because I mean, like it has a stand, so it wasn't like laying on the table, but it was like on its stand on the table, and he, the stand is not very secure. <laughs> no, it wasn't very secure at all, and he. He was like, oh, you're cold. Here, let me get you a blanket. He was being really nice. And he, like, flicked it out to, like, get to spread out over me. And it caught the it caught the wood burner, burned a hole in my blanket, and it fell on the floor. And Not then, all the way through. And then I was like, oh, my God. And I was, like, screaming and panicked. And he was like, I was just trying to help. I was just trying to help. And I'm like, ah, I'm sorry. I'm not trying to yell at you. I was just nervous for your toes. That's all. That thing is that gum almost like 450 degrees hot. Like there ain't no, like if that like so much as like bumps up against you, like there's no saving you from that. Like you going to burn. Yeah. It, it, I didn't say it wouldn't hurt. Like it's not like, cause I feel like even with the stove, like before it's like fully heated up, you know, you can kind of like tap it and like you can feel that it's hot, but it doesn't really hurt cause it's just like short contact. That thing, uh, uh-uh, that'll... Burn on contact. Yeah. But, which we got off track. No. This, this is how our ADHD brains Sorry. work. Sorry. So. Rabbit trail. Hey, Squirrel. Y'all, y'all get a special content. It's fine. This is how our brains work. Yeah. I'm so sorry you're experiencing this. But anyway, so got the, so we got the subfloors installed. By the way, um, <laughs> so another reason you befriend everybody, we got to borrow a paint sprayer. Oh, yeah. Industrial size paint sprayer. That was nice. That was nice. My mother had her entire face covered in paint by the end of it. Yeah, we're going to have to put that picture up, too. If I can find it. She looked like a snowman. It was hilarious. (laughs) But it it was nice because we just, that's the reason everything's white because we literally just got five gallon buckets of keels and. Yeah. Well, because that was another thing that was really bad about this trailer is that the people who lived in it previously were like hardcore smokers. And so, I mean, it was just dripping down the walls like the yellow nicotine. Like you could just see it dripping down the walls. So me and his mom, like while they were, you know, putting the subfloor in and installing toilets and like stuff like that. We were literally scrubbing the walls down with like Fabuloso cleaner and sponges and yeah, just we like, couldn't use Clorox because she gets sick on Clorox. Yeah. But we we were just like we were scrubbing and scrubbing and so we got it like we got it pretty clean and then she came through and put the keels over it. Which is held up really nicely. Like our walls look really good. The only thing is the cabinets like because it, it was just it was just running off the cabinets. Well those cabinets were never really designed for yeah paint really. Which We'll replace them all one day, but yeah. for now, it is what it is. So, but we, so we got subfloor, we got everything painted. The vinyl planks actually went fairly smooth. Yeah, it didn't take part. us. It didn't take us long to get the planks in. It was just, it's just a lot. Yeah, it was just tough on the body, man. It's like my arms were hurting, my kneecaps were screaming at me. Yeah, which and and to be fair, so we. We didn't even do like transition strips anywhere. We just did solid all the way down. Yeah. It is all one giant piece. Yep. So, but it, I think it worked fine. Yeah. That's why I'm like, God forbid we have to like replace a piece like in the kitchen or in the bedroom or something. Cause I'd rather not. <laughs> oh, that'd be rough. It, it'll rot before we have to replace it. <laughs> <laughs> and then. The most aggravating part of all of this was that daggum inspector. Oh, don't even get me started on that inspector. Okay, y'all, listen, let me tell you about this inspector. Okay, <laughs> Mr. Inspector Gadget <laughs> over here. So we like we're we're getting everything like installed and ready and we're like trying to get it up to code or whatever. And luckily, like we had a friend who was a general contractor, so he gave us some tips and everything. And like it was also like I was never here. <laughs> yeah. Um, and and like with his uncle being a plumber, like we were able to get like the little balloon thing that we needed for the for the drain test. So, I mean, because we were doing all of this by ourselves, like we didn't have like a contractor communicating with an inspector to get everything like up to code and inspected. Like we were doing it all ourselves. 
So whenever the first inspection came around, like we were, we were pretty sure that we were not going to pass because it's very rare that you pass on the first try. But we were like, you know, at least we'll be able to get a basis of like how far off we are, like what we'll need to do. So he comes, he inspects and like gives us just a laundry list of things that need to be fixed. Which to be fair, your first inspection, you kind of expect that. Yeah. So we, we get this laundry list like done of stuff. And I mean, like it was, it was tons of stuff. Like it was stuff to do like with the water heater. Like there had to be like a, like a, we needed an expansion tank. Yeah. I was like, we need an expansion so, tank. I didn't know, but and we there, got, like there, that. and also there had to be like a switch and it had to be like X amount of feet away from the water heater. It was like within five feet like, and visible. It was, it was weird stuff that we didn't even know, like was a thing. And, um, Which I think it was all like, current code because this trailer was built in 86 89 yeah it was just like new stuff and then it was like stuff like our stairs like we had we had we had built the stairs because we didn't have any steps for the front and back and so we had built the steps up and um but we didn't have the supports basically yeah we didn't the ground yeah we didn't have the supports in the ground and we had to have like tow boards that weren't there, like stuff like that. So we just had a whole bunch of stuff that we had to fix. Which that's a, that's fine. Yeah. So like getting it up to code, that's okay. That I understand. Yeah. So we so we got all this stuff fixed, and so the second inspection comes around. We had gotten that entire list fixed, and so we were like, unless there is something like severely broken, like we're gonna pass this time. Like this is gonna be great, and it was getting closer to winter, so we were really excited to be. No, it was like, already winter. Well, yeah, this it was, was in March. That is true. It was already pretty cold. We were heading more towards summer. Yeah, because we got married into January. We was living with my parents for like two months while yeah, we was doing all this. I forgot about that. That is another thing too. Like we were just ready to have our own place. Because like really thankful to his parents for letting us stay there, and like it was really nice. It was a really nice place to live, and like we had our own space. Like we had our own room and everything. But, but I want to be clear. When we had our own space, there wasn't even. We room. had a king size bed in there and two dressers, and we barely had walking room because the room was small. Yeah, no, we <laughs> ended up just walking on top of the bed most of the time because there yep. wasn't any room in the floor. And we had Cortana in there with us. Yep, she was and in the bed with us. And she is a us. 60, 80 pound dog. Oh, she was she she because she, she loved to snuggle up to Elijah, which meant her feet were always facing me. She was always kicking me in the back. <laughs> Ugh. Yeah, that was but, fun. But anyway, like the inspector comes out again. We had gotten everything fixed. We were super excited because we were finally going to be able to like, you know, move our bed in here and get everything situated and like actually start living here and like living with each other like by ourselves. So the inspector comes and he's like, okay, great. You got all those things fixed. But uh, here's this other list of things that you need to get fixed. He was like, I forgot. Yeah. And he was like, I forgot. I should have told you this the first time. Literally said that. He was like, I should have caught this the first time, but I didn't catch it. But all this stuff needs to and get fixed. I was, l- luckily, I was at work. Yeah, he was at work. So, so I had I was, sent you. Yeah, I was here. And, oh, because if Lodja had been here, that would not have. Like, I'm not a confrontational person. I would have been confrontational that one. Yeah, no, because because at that point, like we had been living with your parents over two months, and like we were really just ready to move out. Like and newlyweds living with parents, not very fun. Oh no, because <laughs> I mean, like like I said, like it was it was nice of them to let us live there, and it wasn't a bad space to have, and like it was great. I love like hanging out with your parents, but it's like at some point, like we just wanted our own space, like we wanted to be able to have time, like just us two. Yeah, but there was also like some family drama going on at that time well, too. Yeah, that's also so, yeah. Oh, I did forget about that. Yeah, that was like, also true. It was like a it was like fifteen million little things combining into one big issue. Yeah, but it's was, fine. Yeah, that was a lot. But yeah, no, it was just it was crazy. Which what even was it he failed yeah. us for? It was one. like it was it was really oh, wait because it was he was we was he th- he couldn't find a ground rod yeah he couldn't find a ground rod which was still there yeah my electrician was like there it's still there but I'll replace it anyway just to be done with it yeah well he yeah. asked me asked me if he wanted me to I was like just replace it and take a picture of where it's at so I can point it out yeah like he he couldn't find the ground rod 
Um, he said something about, I don't even remember. Cause that time he only gave us like four or five things. Like it wasn't a big list, but Oh, that's whenever he talked about the dryer vent. That's whenever we had to go through that whole debacle, trying to find the parts for the dryer vent. Oh yeah. Cause that was, we didn't have a dryer vent time, which we didn't even have a washer or dryer lined up. Yeah. Like we got the washer and dryer like after a month after we moved in. Oh, I think it was a little more than a month. Cause I did, I did laundry at the laundromat for like. Probably close to two months, actually. Which also around that time, my parents' drive was messed up, too. So you and my mom would go together. Yeah, we would go together. It was really nice. Y'all have one, uh, f- female bonding time. Yep. Female bonding time. Don't say it like that. That's not ooh. Okay. female bonding time. I don't, I don't know what to call it. Anyway. It was, it was mother-daughter-in-law time. There you go. It was it was, it was, was family time. Yeah, which I was, so, I was so glad when we got that washer and dryer. Yeah. And it served us well. It's done real good. Yeah, it's done, it's done really good, which I think it needs a bearing, but... That's fine. That's we'll okay. deal with that later, <laughs> as with most things in life. Yeah, so needless to say, the next time... We got all that stuff fixed, but the next time the inspector came out, his dad, Basil, was basically like, okay, you two are going to make yourself scarce, and I'm going to be here for the inspector. And yep. I was like, oh, oh, Lord, Jesus, please be with this inspector because Basil going to kill him. Basil going to strangle him. Basil Well, gonna... Basil already had a conversation with him prior to that. Yeah, no, it was it was pretty bad. And so so that came around. But then because I think that I think that God did have like a couple more things that he wanted us to fix. But he essentially gave us a pass anyway. He was like, you just need to fix these things. Which we did. Yeah, I think. Yeah, we did. Because it was, like, it was stuff that we had already fixed before, but it just needed to be, like, reconfigured or something. Yep. And so, like, we fixed everything. But it it was basically, like, because the thing is, like, I understand that you're doing your job, but whenever it was something like that, like, all of that should have been included in the first inspection. That way we can have it all done. In the second inspection, we could just be done with it. But for it to be inspection after inspection after inspection of like new things that we needed to get done. Like why like why are we like still going? Yeah, like just give me it to give me it once. Let me fix it and then we'll be good. Yeah. Instead of coming up with new issues. Yeah. It was rough. It was very rough. But at least we got inspect inspected. We got in our house like three months later. Yep. Which I, we had internet before we even Around the same time we oh, had yeah. power, I had internet. Yeah, well, we already had internet and power. The water was a whole situation, though. Oh, yeah, because the, cause the city we live in basically decided, hey, so... Like, had if, just passed a law. Yeah, had this, like, after we moved the trailer. Mm-hmm. And I was calling to get water. The, the city decided, hey, um, so from now on, if a... If a tenant decides to not pay water, we now have permission to come after the landlord for that payment. And, and they like, did not want to they did not want to do that. I had to go up to that lease office like four different times. Mm-hmm. Well, because it's like they had to sign a paper before we could turn the water on saying that they would be responsible for the payment if we decided not to pay yeah, their so water. It took which me like a like, month to get water here. Yeah, which is like I understand. Like if I was a landlord, like I wouldn't want to do that either, especially with it being a new law in place and like that wasn't the case before so it's like i understand but also like what like what were we going to do like we can't live here without water yeah which i think it took me a month and they just got a, aggravated and was like here we'll just we'll do whatever just go ahead and get it done yeah get your, get your water because at that point like i'm paying lot rent yeah i paid lot rent for like two months before i even had water yeah which, because I'm like, at that point, like, just sign the paper, but then have us sign something on the side saying that, like, we're going to be, res- like. Yeah, which now they have it set up where you ha- they have a separate contract and take a water deposit of, like, yeah. 50 bucks. Which is fine. Put that in place. But it shouldn't have taken you a month to figure out that's what you need to put in place. Yeah. It was. That was crazy. After all of that, three months of pure chaos. We finally got into our trailer, and we've literally, like, we we scrounged mm-hmm. half of our stuff. 
Yep. Like our even the vanity in our bathroom we found off Facebook Marketplace. Yeah. Which we got a good deal for that vanity because didn't we only get it for like a hundred bucks or something like that? It's like a hundred and fifty or something like that. Yeah, it was like a hundred or a hundred and fifty, and it's like real, like, like actual nice heavy countertop. Yeah, like it's it's a solid piece countertop. I like it's not granite, but it's it was something. I can't remember exactly what it is. But it was like, and that sucker was heavy too. I'll never forget me and my dad went to pick it up. We didn't think it was going to be that heavy, but oh, good Jesus. We thought we weren't going to be able to get it in the van. I was I was like, this was a mistake. We should have brought mom. Mom has bigger <laughs> muscles than the both of us combined. And that's a sad thing. <laughs> it really is true. She's still strong. But we got it all. And which it also took me another six months before I got underpinning, but. Oh, the the underpinning the underpinning because because yeah. how long did we beg you a long time yeah but we got it eventually and honestly we couldn't have done this without my family let's yeah. be honest well but see that's the thing is like once we got the underpinning it didn't take that long to get it up no i just made like, like do the entire process well yeah that's true because i had to use my dad to threaten people to move yeah and your mom had to talk to some people too Basically, we we just kind of had to let certain people loose. Yep, <laughs> is what happened. But it all came together, and we were in our trailer, uh, which because it's actually kind of nice because it's two bedroom, two bath, which acts like a one and a half. Yeah, because our other shower doesn't work, and it's what I say nine hundred eighty square feet. Yeah, and think the loan payment and our lot rent only comes up to right at six hundred. Yeah, which is phenomenal compared to. A lot of other places. And plus, it's our trailer. We can do whatever we want in here. Yeah. Like, if I want to put random holes in the wall, which I have, oh, I yep. can put random holes in the wall. There's lots of holes in the wall. Uh, I got I got putty. It's fine. <laughs> but, but yeah, no, I mean, that is something that I do really like about about our trailer is the fact that, like, it's, it's ours. And, like, whenever we decide to move, like, we can take this with us. And Gosh, moving is very expensive. It's like gonna be like ten grand to move this thing. Oh yeah, that's true. By the time you unhook everything, move it, and rehook everything up, you're looking at ten grand. Yeah, but it's like just knowing that we have that option. Yeah, because eventually, know? like I said, I want us to buy land, and then we'll put it on the land we own, and then we'll we'll put this like farther up, and then build farther down in the land. Yeah, that is the plan. And then once we have our house then we can use this either as like rental property or i'll probably just give this to my brother that yeah that's also true him and abigail don't have something figured out by then they won't <laughs> well well they might have some somewhere rented you have so little faith in your brother he hasn't proven me otherwise yet <laughs> <laughs> but so. yeah but it's still i mean it's still a work in progress we still have yeah because we still want to paint the walls and yeah Paint I still have baseboards to install. Yeah, oh, them baseboards. Yeah, the our current project right now is we've got some shelves we're putting up that are in the process of being stained. Yeah, because I literally bought boards of wood and and brackets, mm -hmm. and we're installing boards of wood as shelves. Hey, you do what you got to do. Yeah, because buying floating shelves wasn't really much of an option because mm -mm. those are really expensive. But anyway. Uh, I don't even know where the show is going to go after this episode. So, uh, if y'all like this, hang on for the ride. I apologize for the next couple mm -hmm. episodes. <laughs> I have some ideas. That's how you know it's going to get bad. <laughs> <laughs> Love you, but sometimes I'm like, wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. We're all mad here. We're all along for the ride. So, <laughs> <laughs> all right, we'll catch you guys in the next episode. Bye. <laughs>